Okay, this video series is going to be called the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, and this is going to be part one here on Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. And we're going to talk about a regiment of Massachusetts volunteers and their movement and actions here at the Battle of Gettysburg on July 2nd and 3rd of 1863. Now, the 28th Massachusetts was a part of the 2nd Corps under William, or I'm sorry, Winfield Scott Hancock. They were under under first division under John C. Caldwell, and the second brigade under Colonel Patrick Kelly here at Gettysburg. Now, about 4 a.m. on the morning of July 2nd, 1863, the Second Corps began to move from their position down near the Maryland state line along the Tawny Town Road, and they began to head northbound on the Tawny Tawny Town Road toward the town of Gettysburg. Now, around 11 a.m. in the morning of July 2nd, they come to the intersection here where you see this white farm. That is the Jacob Hummelball farm. Now, Pleasanton Avenue was not here at the time, but there was a farm lane, and they made a left onto that farm lane and then came here into the position that we are now standing. And they arrived here about 11.30 in the morning of July 2nd, 1863. And from here they would be placed into position. Now around the same time, between 11 and 12 o'clock on July 2nd, 1863, as the Union line extended from the Ziegler's Grove area down into this area, um, Dan Sickles, the commander of the 3rd Corps, was positioned into a position down with his line anchoring the round tops. He was very unhappy with that position. He did not like the position that General Meade put him in, and he decided at that time he was going to move his men forward about three quarters of a mile into high ground surrounding the Sherfy Peach Orchard. And when he did that, he would open up the entire Union line uh, with holes, and they would have to fill those holes, and the men would have to be shuffled around. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 1 on Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part two on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're standing here today at the Pennsylvania Monument. And on the morning of July 2nd, 1863, around 11.30 in the morning, uh, Father William Corby, the chaplain of the Irish Brigade, uh, stood on a rock in this area and gave general absolution to the troops. Now today, the Father Corby Monument actually sits about 900 yards here south of our position. But the rock actually sat right here in the area of the Pennsylvania Monument in 1863. When this monument was built, um, there was a slight hill and a lot of rocks on the ground, and they were moved to build this monument. So this is actually the area where Father Corby gave his general absolution. Now as a, a Catholic priest, he always began with, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he sat the Irish Brigade down around him. And he gave what was called a general absolution to the troops, absolving them from their sins if they had been killed in battle. Now, not only Catholics, but Protestants were so moved by this that they knelt as well. Uh, Major General Winfield Scott Hancock, his headquarters sits right over here, where you see the upright cannon in the distance. He stood nearby, and though he didn't kneel, he did doff his hat out of respect for Father Corby. Little, to the, little did the men know at this time that most of these men uh, who knelt down in prayer and received that general absolution, this would be their final prayer. They would be moved, and about an hour and a half later, they would be engaged at the bloody wheat field here at Gettysburg on July 2nd, 1863. Now at this time, Hancock orders the men to form up, being uh, the 28th Massachusetts and the Irish Brigade. They were then moved across this today, this street, into this field to the west of the Pennsylvania Monument. And when they were moved into that field, they were put in two ranks. And the first rank, on the left-hand side, would have been the 116th Pennsylvania Volunteers, and to their right, would have been the 28th Massachusetts. And the second rank behind them would have been the 69th, then the 88th in the middle, and then the 63rd New York 
to the right. So they had two ranks, and they were first formed in this field to the west of the Pennsylvania Monument. In our next video, we will begin to look, we will go over to the Father Corby uh, Monument where it sits there today, and we'll begin to talk about how they moved from this position toward the George Weicker Farm, and then how they would end up over at the wheat field. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 2, here okay, on Gettysburg Battlefield. Okay, 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 3, here on Gettysburg Battlefield, Facebook and Ultimate. And we are going to talk now about uh, the movement of the 28th Massachusetts from their position uh, just to our north here. Now, again, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Hancock orders the men in this direction, because now, as Sickles has moved out with his third corps, this end of the Union line is now vacant and he needs troops down here. So the second corps troops, all four brigades, the brigades of Kelly, the brigade of Brook, the, the brigades under Zook, begin to move into this direction by the left flank. Now the 28th Massachusetts in Colonel Patrick Kelly's brigade, they're over here in the field and they now march by the left flank. And the order of march is going to be the 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York Volunteers in the front, followed by the 28th Massachusetts, and then finally bringing up the rear would be the 116th Pennsylvania. And they're going to move along this field right here in this direction in two uh, ranks toward the George Weikert farm, which you can see over there in the distance. Now when they get to the George Weikert farm, they halt momentarily and then they front back into their original two rank position as they were over here where the site of the Pennsylvania Monument is today. Um, while we're here, we're going to turn around and we're going to look at the monument to the Reverend William Corby, the chaplain of the Irish Brigade, the chaplain priest. And this monument, uh, when it was dedicated, it was said to have that the same rock that he is standing on here with the monument is the same rock he stood on when he gave his general absolution. We do know that the absolution was down further toward the Pennsylvania Monument. And as I said in the last video, when they built the Pennsylvania Monument, they kind of trimmed down the hill and they removed a lot of the boulders that were in the ground. They most likely had moved the boulder that he stood on that the men remember him on and moved it down here. One of the other reasons that that monument was put where it is here is because at one time, in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, there was a fully operational steam engine that brought tourists to Little Round Top. And we did a video series in the past called the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And you'll want to go back and watch that video series. In that video series, I do show and mention that railroad. And that railroad actually one time, if you look over here to your left, you will see the top of the Corridori Barn. And just to the right of that Corridori barn is where the uh, railroad had crossed the Emmitsburg Road. It then made its way down toward the Pennsylvania Monument, which there was a park there at one time. There was actually a baseball field down there, not far from the, the wounding spot of General Hancock. And then made its way into this area right here before crossing this very road right here where I'm placing my cane today. And if you look in the distance, uh, you'll see a clearing in the woods over there. And that's actually where the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad steam engine crossed this road and went into the woods. And there, there are still markers out in the woods, iron railroad tie markers that's, uh, uh, that used to hold signs, like whistle signs, and they're still uh, embedded into the ground. Uh, this has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part three on Gettysburg Battlefield, Facebook and Ultimate. At Gettysburg, part four here on Gettysburg Battlefield, Facebook and Gettysburg Battlefield, Ultimate. And we are here today at the George Weikert Farm. Now this farm and the house that you see over there was actually built in the year of 1787. The barn was built in 1794. It's currently 
uh, getting its bricks repointed again. That's what the scaffold leaves for. And the 28th Massachusetts, as they march uh, from over the area where the Pennsylvania Monument sits in the comma two at the left flank, they reformed in this field into their two ranks again, which then put the 116th Pennsylvania with the um, 28th Massachusetts to their right in the front rank, and then the 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York in the rear rank behind them. And they hauled it briefly, and this is where there's a little bit of confusion with the march. Because at this point, point now, Sickles is out at the Peach Orchard. He moves his men out at the Peach Orchard, and if you look down the road here, you will see the Trossel Barn. And that is where Sickles uh, made his headquarters, down there at the Trossel Barn, and that is also where he would be wounded at, at down here at the Trossel Barn. But in this area right here, um, the brigade began to split with the different uh, commanders. Uh, the, the, the commander named Zook, Colonel Zook, would take his troops down toward the Trossel Farm because they weren't exactly sure where they were going to meet up yet. There, there hadn't been decided that this particular brigade was going to be moved into the wheat field. They were here all supporting the empty hole in the line that Sickles had caused by moving his troops three quarters of a mile forward. Uh, over here on the other side of the George Weikert farm would have been where uh, Colonel John Rudder Brook and Colonel Cross would have moved on the other side of the farm down toward the hill that you see over here in the distance. However, Colonel Patrick Kelly's brigade uh, including the 28th Massachusetts Volunteers Irish Brigade would actually take the George Weikert farm lane. And that farm lane today is the same farm lane it was in 1863. It goes down here and then turns around to the left. Give us a minute here for the car to go by. That farm lane uh, goes down here, and then it bends around to the left along the stone wall. That farm lane would then connect with the John Weikert farm, and that is where we are going to pick up in our next video. The 28th Massachusetts at this point would then be put into ranks of two after they were formed. Now Longstreet is attacking the troops. He's sending out McClaws and he's sending out Barksdale and they're all moving forward. They're coming under fire. The battle's about to begin here uh, in heavy terms. Uh, the 28th Massachusetts would take the George Weikert farm lane down to the John Weikert farm. They would be in the order of march that they were here by the left flank again, which again would be the 63rd New York, 88th New York, 69th New York, 28th Massachusetts Volunteers, and bringing up the rear once again, the 116th Pennsylvania. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 4 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate.